All right, guys. Hi, this is going to be a fun one. My name is Dr. Shornell Wolverton. Sihan, welcome to the show. We are so excited to have a new guest that I am really, really excited about. Um, she's actually another fellow healer, naturopath, like type kind of chiropractor, you know, loves all the healing stuff. And so I love meeting fellow people who are kind of doing the same type of service, but we are not going to talk about that. Uh, we may get into it, but we're actually going to talk about her near death experience. Um, I found her when I was binging and still am binging on different people's experiences, comparing to some of the stuff that I've went through and trying to see like what other people are saying and what they have experienced. And um, when I came upon this lady, um, Dr. Mary Helen Hennessy, um, she was one of the most fun positive experiencers I've ever encountered. And I just was like, oh my gosh, I have to have her on my show. I want to be her best friend. Like I was like, I just love you so much. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to have a couple announcements. I want to remind everybody, hit the like, you know, share this. This is going to be very important information for right now, especially with all the things going on in everybody's lives positivity and fun and laughter and just understanding a little bit about life and death is a really good idea in this season, um, in my experience anyway. And so I hope you guys will, um, you know, share this. You never know who's going to see this, that this can, can bring some encouragement, some hope, some inspiration. That is the goal here. Um, um, you can go to swiftfire.org. My books are there, my classes, all those wonderful things. Um, you can also find out about the past shows, upcoming shows, all of that. So get on the newsletter. But without further ado, I would love to just, uh, I'm so happy and excited and just surprised, actually, to bring this lady on. Dr. Mary, um, when I sent you your a message on Facebook, I was like, she probably won't even get this. I probably won't hear back. And literally, she responded. And then I was like, is this a fake account? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was doubting. I was like, and then like she, oh, she's definitely not a fake account. This is her. And I'm really, really excited. She's in, where are you? You're in the UK or New Zealand? I'm in or Ireland. 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 So we're doing this across the pond kind of stuff today. But welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Yes, ma'am. So can you tell us a little bit about your how did you get to this spot? And then I'd love to go in to your actual experience just to share with everyone. Started in the womb. Um, <laughs> it actually did. Yes, <coughs> true. Me. That's so true. <coughs> Hay fever season here. Oh yes. All you do is drive down the roads, and there's giant rolls of hay. So, <coughs> of course, I'm going to start hay. coughing. Nice. Yes. Um, hey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So um, it seriously did all start in the womb. My, my mom was in her early 40s and they found out they were pregnant. And my mom actually went into the doctor because she thought she had menopause and she just went in to find out what to expect. And so he took her by the arm and pointed out to the waiting room and there are all these pregnant ladies sitting there. And he goes, that's what you can expect. And she was like, what? So um, obviously, uh, you know, with the age and with everything, they were a little bit nervous, but then in the first trimester of her pregnancy, she ends up getting called back in because she had the German measles. <gasps> so remember this is back in the sixties. And so getting that diagnosis in the first trimester of pregnancy is bad news. Right. And so they went through everything. And so I only found out my mom and I go on these great road trips and she just, she just flew back to America yesterday. So I've had her for the last month and we're like rocking down the highway in the UK going to look at some 11,000 year old monolith as you do. And um, she's telling me this story and she was like, yeah, did you realize that six doctors advised your father not to terminate the pregnancy? And I went, what? That's new info. I didn't know that. And I mean, I knew all about the German measles, measles, obviously, but I didn't know this part. And she goes, yeah. And so this leads into what happened. My father was um, a Southern Baptist and a minister. So I'm a preacher's girl. And so I grew up in the good old Bible belt, not too far from you, darling. Yep, and, um, you know, so I was that weird kid who um, just didn't quite fit into that world. And so um, 
when my parents found out the news and they opted, uh, they were like, um, you know, we don't know what to do. And they'd been advised, listen, just, you need to terminate this pregnancy. This is not good. And so my father gets this visit and this is where things get interesting because as a minister, you would think it was like the Holy Spirit. It was an angelic visit. Well, no, it was what he had to call celestial beings. Mm. So these were, you know, by all his descriptions later in life that, you know, they would be like extraterrestrial celestials or interdimensional Mm -hmm. travelers, but these angels did not have wings and they were certainly not in the box with when, you know, with what he had put angels in over the years. Um, and so he had a very profound, very prolific interaction with these beings who said not only was his daughter, remember this is in the sixties, we don't have the ultrasound yet. Not only was his daughter going to be okay, but she was going to come in a little bit different. And so he was, he clung to this. He was so convinced. Of course, he told my mother everything that happened. And so they were like, okay, we're going ahead with this. And so against all of the advice, they went ahead and had the pregnancy and out I popped. And so other than, you know, quirky little head tilt and a gleam in my eye, um, everything they had been told was going to happen didn't. And so um, one thing that, that they were aware of was that these interesting gifts would unfold. And Mm -hmm. so imagine what that's like for a minister and his wife in the South in the late sixties. And you're kind of waiting for that shoe to drop, you know, like, what do you do with that? And a lot of praying, they prayed a lot, you know? So so that was kind of how my story started. And then we kind of fast forward to the age of four when I got what I always refer to as the kitchen table talk. And the kitchen table talk was when my father, again, Huge, big American football player, minister, big, deep, booming voice. And um, he called me and I'm four. And he goes, Sugar, do you know the difference between alive and dead? And I'm like, uh, uh, I'm four. And what he was, what he was getting to was at this stage, they, he was going berserk. Because I'm talking all the time. My best friend at the time was my mother's father. Dr. Garland Clark. He was a a surgeon from Kentucky, amazing individual, a profound healer in his own right. Um, And he was my best friend. Like he taught me so much from an early age about, um, about healing and about the world around me and about interactions. And so of course I'm at, you know, at my young age, I'm telling my parents about all of this. Well, when dad sits me down and asks me that question, what I didn't realize was that my grandfather judge had died when I was one. And so I'm like, alive and dead? I don't understand. Because the same way I'm looking at you, and you look real as real can be to me, and via my personal experiences, I know that if I were sitting in that room with you, that most likely you're in the flesh and blood the same as myself. I can make that grand assumption. But right now, as we do this live, you are not in flesh and blood in front of me. But I know that somewhere out there you are. And so I see this 2D image of you and I'm having this fantastic conversation with you, but you aren't here with me in the same form that I'm in. And that's the best way I can describe talking to my grandfather. So this kind of interdimensional communication, because he's certainly not dead, he's just not the same alive as me. So that was the only way I could explain this to my parents. And so... They're like, okay, because what was bugging them was that I knew all this stuff about Judge that only I could have known if I'd known Judge. And there's no way I could have known this. And so now they're starting to realize, oh, that's what the beings were talking about. So that's how it unfolded for me. And so then the dream started. And then, you know, knowing knowing that Mrs. Jones was going to die next Tuesday, and she did, um, you know, came in handy, wrote eulogies with my father when the people had died before he could get to them. We, that was no problem. We just dialed them up and we wrote that eulogy the way they wanted it to go. <laughs> so, wow. It was Dude. an interesting childhood. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of, I didn't know if I remembered this part, uh, in, in the interview that I saw with you, but, um, that's, this is another thing because I actually had an angelic thing happen for my daughter and I had had several miscarriages and um, they were trying to get me, us to abort her as well. Uh-huh. 
And I'm like, this is kind of crazy synchronicities, but um, I don't know if you shared that every time uh, on the interview, but I don't know if I heard that before. So I, I may or may not. Sometimes I talk about it was just, it just seemed the right thing to, to lead in with. I'm like, yeah. what? This gives me, this helps me remember some things, but anyway, keep going. This is well, amazing. And that's such a big, you know, I, I'll pause right there because whoever's listening, somebody needs to hear this. Um, it's very interesting having had a near death experience and, and also there's so many debates and it's become so political with what happens, you know, with the woman's body and, um, you know, and a pregnancy that belongs to the two parents. Um, you know, the, the, the child in and of itself is inside the woman's body, but the pregnancy in and of itself belongs to the two who are bringing the soul into the world. Um, it's the way that I feel about that. Um, so sometimes it's an option to have that discussion and sometimes it's not. Um, and so uh, every single person's experience of this is different, which is why, you know, Nikola Tesla said, anytime you feel yourself in judgment, you're just making a confession <laughs> because some version of you somewhere in some time has already been in this space and you're passing judgment on no one but yourself. Wow. And so I think it's really important to mention one of the most amazing things that happened in this near death experience was I got the opportunity because I'm using it for the last 30 years with people. You can't even imagine how many people I've been able to touch with this particular experience. And um, it was being shown what actually happens. So when a soul is choosing to incarnate into the earth realm, and it is a choice, guys, um, and you're choosing who you're coming into, and that agreement has been made, you know, in, an, in a different space and time, um, a, there's one thing to remember, regardless of what a parent chooses to do, whether it's terminate a pregnancy, whether they've lost the child to miscarriage, whether it was a stillborn, what, what, whatever those circumstances happen, we don't have the kind of power to deny a soul its experience here. So wow. if you ended up having to choose an abortion, like in my case, I was raped when I was 17. And at 17, I wasn't, I was in no way prepared to become a mother and I wasn't going to do it. And it was, it, it was a difficult, imagine, I told you where I came from. I told you I'm a preacher's kid. It was not an easy decision because it was going to be one that I made alone. And it was going to be an experience that I shouldered by myself. And it was also, you know, it was it, because of a rape. And so that, that was a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. And so you make these decisions and I have not ever looked back and gone, Oh gosh, I regret doing that. I wish I'd never done it. Not once, not one time. I have helped so many people because of the choice I made, because of that experience. And it's not the choice for everyone. In someone else's story, it might be that that act of motherhood was going to come to them that way because it wasn't going to come any other way. You, it, you don't know the circumstances that people are going through. So it's just kind of like sit back, tend your own garden and let them unfold it however they're meant to. But mm -hmm. one of the things that I saw was this beautiful example of what actually happened. So imagine if you had a really cold, snowy day outside and you were getting ready to go to work. And so you've got to go out and you've got to warm the car up. So you walk out, you stick the keys in the ignition, you fire it up, um, you start the wipers going, you turn the heater on and you get go back inside, you know, you make a cup of coffee for the road, do whatever. And this car is outside, there's exhaust coming out, the radio might be playing, those wipers are going, that car looks alive. So to someone who's not from this space, who's coming by and looking at that, to them, this is an animated object. It looks alive. Only one thing's missing. What is it? There's no driver. Oh. And so the body, when it's forming and growing inside, and there's, there are multiple layers to pregnancy, multiple layers. Becoming a mother is not just because you have a baby in your hands. The experience of motherhood comes to men and women alike in such a way where you go through the experience of finding out you're pregnant. Are you keeping this pregnancy? Are you having a discrepancy between the two of you about this pregnancy? Are you going to move forward? Have you been informed that something's wrong with the child? All of the, the delicious little layers of the cake that are there. What actually happens in the end though, is that body as it's growing, that little vessel, that little vehicle is growing in the body and it is there with the capacity to house a soul should the soul choose to come in. Sometimes the vessel grows because it's there for the benefit of the mother and father or the mother, right? 
And so all that's going to happen is that the vessel was necessary to create the set of circumstances where they had to make a choice or she had to make a choice or there had to be a problem or it could be the mother's way out. She dies in birth to a million different scenarios. And we get so hung up on this ridiculous little notion of this and this. You don't have the power. You don't have the power to end an individual's opportunity to incarnate into this plane. The very same way as, you know, oh, oh he, he was murdered. He, he was, this got done to them. Okay. And that was on their life plan. No, it was not. Nobody would choose that. Nobody would choose cancer. Oh yeah, they do. I deal with it every day. People do make those choices consciously and subconsciously because we all have different layers. And that's, it's the kind of thing where it's just an opportunity. It's just an experience for the individual to have. And it was such a beautiful part of the NDE where I got to see that car and I'm like, oh, I'm a really visual person. And I'm like, the car looks alive, but nobody's driving. Mm. So if you've lost a child, if mm. you've had to terminate a pregnancy for whatever your, you know, whatever your personal reasons are that are nobody else's business, um, that's what it looks like, guys. So it's kind of, you know, you want to detach from the trauma and the drama of what you think you might have done or the guilt or the shame attached to, oh, no, I, that child never got to live. That's not that's not how it works. And that is a very beautiful part of that experience that has stuck with me forever. And it has just been it's been so amazing. So, um, you know, that's an animated vehicle that can receive a soul or it's an animated vehicle that doesn't receive a soul, but serves a major purpose. So that was pretty awesome. That's, that's huge. That's such a bigger perspective and big picture of, of, of things as far as the whole like black and white, you know, it's, it's, um, that's a different, uh, interesting perspective and or experience that you had. Um, get us to the part where you actually past like how okay. when was that and when what so i have this unusual childhood and then i hit the teenage years now one of the things that my parents wanted to do was they wanted to protect me you know you've got this kid doing all this weird stuff and so they were like can we um can we not share this with other people it's not that there's a problem with that but mm -hmm. we don't want you unsafe or exploited or whatever their reasons were so yeah. we didn't talk about this not even to my siblings and so I spend the teenage years going, oh, something must be wrong with me. This is strange. I'm weird. I can't talk about this. And so you do your best to kind of hide that. It's still happening. It was still happening. But I, now, I, now I just felt weird talking about it. Mm -hmm. And so I went through that period. So I get to college. It's really amped up. So imagine you're for the first time you're in college, you're sharing a room with a roommate. And I'm like, uh... I hope nobody dead shows up in the middle of the night because this is going to be tough to explain. Um, so the first time I ever told anyone outside of the circle was in college and it was my college roommate. She was just like, that's awesome. Do you know, most people, when you talk to them about it, they're fascinated and they want to share something from their own experiences. Um, so the vast majority of people who think, oh, no, I don't want to talk about this stuff because people will think I'm weird. It's that's usually not the experience. Most people have something they want to tell. So if you've got a story, share it. You'd be surprised who wants to come out of that closet. And um, so I'm in college and I've still got everything going on, but not really talking about it. And um, I had made an agreement with myself that if I'd made it to adulthood um, and I wasn't utilizing the gifts that I'd been given, that I set an event up to happen. Um, now, this is not something I'm consciously aware of. So remember, I'm in college. I'm a cheerleader. You know what the South is like. And, you know, I'm cheering at these games. Woo! And I'm coming back and we're cracking open a beer and opening um, this little envelope that I've tucked into the underwear drawer before I've gone to cheer at the game with the basketball score on it. <laughs> That's so funny. Look what she did. And this is my service to humanity. Wow. So. This car accident was so I could snap myself out of that world and put my put myself on the path that I had intend to, intended to in the first place. And I gave myself the spectrum of the 21 years of adulthood that, you know, that we as human beings, which I don't think age has anything to do with being an adult. But anywho, um, that's what happened. And so I graduated from college, 
you know yourself in the South, if you're dating someone in college, your mom's picking out the China patterns and that's how that rolls. And so I end up uh, moving to Charleston, South Carolina, where my sweetheart was from because everybody's expecting this to carry forward and we're going to be a thing and we're going to get married and, you know, we've graduated college now. So I went to Charleston and I, I had been there about six months, seven months. Um, and I was working in a sign shop. I was mopping floors with my big college degrees and it was time for our Christmas party. So it was December 14th, 1991. And I was leaving my apartment and I was coming to a major intersection um, called Highway 17. And Highway 17 has several lanes going this way and several this way. And it's a big highway in Charleston. So I was going to this party. I'm dressed, uh, or I'm dressed in Bermuda shorts and a Santa Claus t-shirt and a Jingle Bell. And like I'm ready to rock for this little party. And I get to the traffic lights that are going to allow me to turn onto the highway. Well, I hit the red light. So I'm sitting. And what I didn't realize at the time was my sweet mate from college is two cars behind me. Now, my college was hours away from Charleston. And um, Charleston was about 350,000 people at that stage. So it was very interesting that the girl that I lived next to for so long was there to witness my accident. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, my light turns green. And... I start moving across the lanes of traffic. Everybody has stopped at their lights. I start moving and I'm going across because I'm going to be turning towards town. I get to that last lane of traffic and I look and all of a sudden I realize, oh, that guy's not going to stop. As a matter of fact, what do you do? Do you slow down when you're running a red light or do you speed up? So he sped up to what they estimated was 75 miles an hour. And it was an 81 year old man who had almost killed a couple earlier in the summer and should have lost his license. And he didn't. And boy, am I glad he didn't because I wouldn't be sitting here telling you this story if he had. Um, so everything for a reason. He, he was, a, he was still to be a player in my game. And um, so he put the pedal to the metal. He came through and this is when my whole world changed. All of a sudden, everything just slowed down to an absolute standstill. And I'm, oh, I'm getting ready to die, fully aware. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm suddenly aware, oh, I've done this lots of times. Oh, my gosh, I've done this lots of times. And that ain't something they teach you in Sunday school in the South, y'all. Um, and I'm like blown away. And I'm like, holy cow, what's going on? This is amazing. And then there was this sound. Now, like you said before, I live in Ireland um, and I love good old traditional Irish music. And so I'm a Bowron player, which is the round drum. And um, I love a great session. Well, my favorite instrument to listen to is what they call the Ilian pipes. Ilian meaning elbow pipes. And so it's a pipe that are a little bag and they make this beautiful droning noise. And that's the most, that's the closest noise I can give to you. It's like that. As, as the pipes are kind of piping up and getting ready for this great session. So I love that sound. That's And that's what it sounded like. All of a sudden, I could just hear this sound all around me as everything is completely screeched to a halt. And then I was very aware all of a sudden, okay, kiddo, how you want to do this? You're going, but do you want to stay in the body, get the impact, and then go? Or do you want to go and then let the impact happen? And I was like, oh, I'm taking door B, please. Um <laughs> You know, because then I realized all of a sudden, like, I've done this before. Oh, my gosh, I've done this before. I don't need to stay in the body and feel that impact. And so I opted to leave the body. So I'm not just a near-death experiencer. I witnessed my own death, which is really fascinating. Because on the circuit that I'm on, you know, I travel the world, and write books, talk about this all the time. I get to talk about it to a lot of people who've had this experience. And so one thing that I find uniquely interesting about the story is that not everybody gets to watch their death. And so I was up and out of my body and now I'm looking down and I'm not already dead yet because you'll hear a lot of people talk about, you know, they look back, their dead body was on the operating table, they flatlined, they were, you know, their body was laying in the pavement, whatever. I haven't been, I, I haven't been killed yet. So there's this sound. Oh my gosh. And next thing I'm lifting up and I'm looking down and right when I made that decision that I was going to watch my death happen instead of being inside and feeling the impact, because at 75 miles an hour, 
getting T-boned into the driver's side. You can imagine that hurt a little. And, um, you know, so you're, you got a car coming like this and boom, car folds in half. Well, I'm right there inside. And so like, I'm looking down and everything speeds up. Whoosh. The car comes. I watch the car hit. I watch my car fold. It spins around the intersection. I see my head go through. And so you might've noticed as I'm talking to you, I've got a weird head tilt. It's because I broke my neck. And, um, that's how I actually clinically died was from the, the neck break. And so, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I think I'm looking all right. I just got a crooked head. My mom spent all of my life trying to do this. And I'm like, mom, just give it a rest. It's, it's never coming straight again. And I'm a chiropractor. Um, and so I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to be here with my quirky head tilt. Um, but car spins around. I see my head go through the window. I'm strapped in with the seat belt and I'm like a little puppet sitting there. And I was like, Oh my God, you know, I'm watching this body and I have no attachment whatsoever. And my favorite description of this, you live in Louisiana, right? And y'all get hot. Like we get in Virginia, dog hot in the summer, dog days of summer. And so if you can picture being outside and you've been out all day and you are so gross, you're dirty, you're sweaty, you can't wait to get your bra off, you're just disgusting. And you go inside the back door and you peel the clothes off and you throw them down by the washing machine and then you go have the best cold shower ever. The last thing you're thinking about is the dirty clothes next to the washing machine. And this, my friends, is exactly what it feels like when you come out of your body. And I don't care how good it was to you and how old you got and what, what experiences you had and who you were in love with or who you, who you cheated on or whatever. I don't care. The body was just the car. And you are in that shower and having the most glorious, oh, yes. And the last thing you care about is your dirty, crumpled, used up body. Interesting. The best way I can describe it. Now, do you have gratitude for the experience of having been human? Sure, you're, you're well aware, but all of a sudden you're like super smart in that moment because your memory starts coming back. The amnesia mm. is real. We need the amnesia because just think about it. If you already knew the outcome of how the game plays out, the game's not quite as fun, right? right. So we as souls, when we're coming in, my favorite analogy with that is it's like picture a Monopoly game. It's like if you and I sit down, you know, we're having a great night of Monopoly and we are in total agreement that we're immersing in the game. We're having fun, but I know you're not a silver dog and I know I'm not a shoe. And I know that I can't buy valuable property with a pink $500 bill. Right. But wow. we suspend that reality temporarily so that we can have some fun playing that game. And that's what it's like. So you're in this space in that moment and you're just like, Oh yeah. Oh, Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, remember that remember that water bill I freaked out over? <laughs> you know, that's why now I like rip open the I have like whenever bills come in or anything, I'm like, thank you for the lights, thank you for the water, thank you for this. Okay, I'll figure out how to pay that later. You know what? Like it's it all becomes an exercise in gratitude because the hardest thing for me coming back in is trying to remember that I chose to be immersed in the game. Now I've come back in a different role because I know so much stuff about who we really are that I'm trying to, I'm not trying to take away the game experience from people because why would I do that? Mm. I am now um, like a game maker. I am here to help facilitate people's immersive experience in this game. It's like being the paddle in a pinball machine. Somebody starts veering off there, tick, 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 just tap them off this way and tick, 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 back over here. And if that means dropping a little truth or it means, given a different perspective, that's what I do. So as a healer, I have people come to me from all over the world and they've got every disease you can shake a stick at. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that I am allowed to facilitate a complete healing with. And then there are other people that I am there to help die really well. And then there are other people who are going to have a prolonged illness because they need to learn X, Y, and Z from this. And who am I to take that away from them? So you have to remember that healing, again, it's that whole black and white thing. Healing isn't just about making somebody better. So I feel really good about myself. Mm -hmm. Healing is about reaching in and asking that soul, how can I assist you? Wow. What can I do to enhance your experience here? And that's what being a near-deather has done for me.
I am, I am just like my brain is I'm taking notes because there's so many, I'm going to have to watch this like three times. Um, <laughs> why, so you're in Ireland. So, you know, about, um, what's his name? McGregor, the, um, the fighter. Uh, have you ever, you know who I'm talking about? What's his mm -hmm. first name? Um, Connor. What is it? Connor. Connor. I, um, I follow him. I'm a little bit of a geek about him, but, um, I just watched this like TikTok thing because, you know, he's done pretty much every belt and, you know, won all the things. And he has this really positive, you know, mentality, I think, and um, manifesting and believing and stuff. And he, he just was just talking about the game and he was like talking about, you know, this is my game. And, you know, and they were telling him like what he was going to do or whatever. And he was just like, no, dude, you're going to do this because this is my game. And I was so just do you like, remember the headlines on him when he went out and he and they had a little too much to drink one night and there was a little hoo-ha and it hit all the papers. I, and here's what we human beings do. A human being goes off and has an experience that might not be congruent with our idea of what's copacetic. And so we turn in judgment to that individual and we have this awful, awful habit of negating everything else that the individual has done because they did X, Y, or Z on this day. Okay, but what about the what about the perverts? What about the child molesters? What about the, the it's all a game, guys? Well, that's it's what I was just gonna go a to. Game. That's what you I know? literally what I had for notes is like, what about the narcissistic ex-husband that you pick and then you're still dealing with 14 years later or whatever? You know what I mean? Like, how do you detach? but still be in the game and get the lesson. And then like, is there, you know, like, what do you do with that? And then, yeah. the, the What do you mean? What do you do with it? You don't like it because it's uncomfortable. Uh -huh. but, right. But yeah. If you're still attached to it, you attached you to that. Uh -huh. Right. And an individual narcissistic assholes, especially have to act in a certain way based on the vibration that you're projecting towards them. So they can only, they just fall away and they go away when you no longer need them. Sure. And what I mean by that is there is something that you're still hanging on to. Yeah. But what about that? If there is a yeah, but in your vocabulary, they still need to be there. <laughs> That's good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, last night I, I get this stuff like in my power hour, hour, I call it like the, right before I go to sleep, right before I wake up, like the 30 minute kind of thing. And I saw the word life. And then I saw backwards the word life. And I saw, so I saw life equals evil equals life. And I was just like, what in the world is that? And, and, and it just on a personal, and I haven't shared this publicly um, but another reason why I'm like really binging on the NDEs right now is a guy from high school, just uh, our dear friend of mine lives across the street, played football with my, my uh, husband. He is a cop and he just went to go on a um, domestic incident right here in our little tiny town. And the guy, um, he, he shot, he had, he had an AK and did nine rounds into his vehicle and he, he hung on for nine days and he just passed. Sorry. We've had, I've had like 17 people pass in a very quick amount of time. And I'm trying to remember, choosing to remember like my experience, but also the lesson, the bigger picture, like, you know, and, and trying to make some sense of, gosh, I didn't think I was going to cry. Like, I'm totally like, what is going on? This is so unprofessional. Um, <laughs> Stop right there. Yes. You have a whole lot of people watching this right now, and I need you to explain to them why you think that's unprofessional. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Calm down. Okay. Why is that so, unprofessional? Yeah. I just don't want to be emotional. So uh, let's let's backtrack. Did you hear that, guys? It's not unprofessional to cry on on in authenticity. Okay, yes. not wanting to cry is very different than it being unprofessional to cry. Okay, yes. so there is no reason to say that. So maybe this session and this this talk and this one 
maybe there's as much in, in this for you as there is for anybody else who's watching. Sure. Absolutely. I agree hundred percent. And, and, you know, for, for whatever reason, you know, um, neighbor next door just passed 40 years old. Yesterday I got the news that, um, my best friend's brother passed. I've had like three pets passed. I was in ER last night and thought another one was going to go and like all in like a really short amount of time. And I was just like, I feel like everything's just speeding up and like not feeling a whole lot of control about it and just trying to let me ask you this. So when it wasn't sped up and when it was more sporadic, did you feel like you had control over it then? No, you're right. No, no. like you're contradicting yourself there. So yeah, what's yeah. happening is what you've got to realize is just because it's a lot of people that you know, doesn't mean that that's about you, the observer. It means that there is, um, it's, there's a great, we have a wave, the world, the earth undulates. Okay. It's not this, it's not flat or round y'all hate to break it to you. <laughs> You're right. It vacillates. Right. And so what happens is these portals of energy open and close, open and close. And there are times that it is, it's a much more appealing time to exit for an individual who might be going, Oh, well, I'm supposed to be going in the next three months anyway. So you know what? I'm going to take this door. I'm going to go at this time. And so there are often a lot of individuals and also look at the, th the things that are going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And so there are some who want to get out before X, Y, or Z happens. There are some who definitely want to stay while X, Y, and Z happens. And so it's really important. My, my whole world has changed. You know, I'm a, I'm a doctor of chiropractic and, um, you know, there are certain words that I won't drop or say here because I know what they do, but we've had an interesting last couple of years. Um, and so you can imagine as a natural health care practitioner who believes in the mind, body, spirit and vitalistic um, entities that we are who reside inside of these meat suits, I have a lot of faith in what we're capable of doing. So you can see where I might stand on a certain issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm so I've been here, I've been here delivering the goods. I was the only one really open in my town through, uh, through the whole thing. Um, it was funny because half the police in the town come to me and they're like, don't you dare close. And I just deemed myself essential because for God's sake, I'm not letting anybody else decide whether I'm essential or not. Are you kidding? That goes against everything I stand for. Um, and so you can imagine now, oh, whew, everything's over. No, 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 not in my world. Because based on the choices that a lot of people made, and for some people, they might not be seeing any effects, but for a huge amount of people, I'm losing people that have been in my realm and my circle here in Ireland for 25 years in my practice. And when I say dropping like flies, I mean dropping like flies. Mm -hmm. And so I cry in the middle of work sometimes. I cry when I get that next bit of news that the mother who was dying to have this baby lost the baby um, because of a choice she made during the pregnancy. And it's happening over and over and over and over. I was speaking to a paramedic friend of mine yesterday and he said, what was for a year is for a week. And we were talking about, we were just giving each other a big hug, talking about the emotional aspect of this because it's tough because mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm Dr. Death. I am the death girl. I love talking about death. I'm not afraid of death. But watching it day in and day out with people that I love, that people that I've walked through the game with, I'd be made of stone if it didn't affect me. So, of course, you're going to experience this impact. Of course, you're going to feel it. And it's not that the world has sped up. It's that based on what's happened over the last couple of years and the choices that a huge amount of people made out of fear, it has exacerbated physical ailments. It has exacerbated um, emotional issues, and there's a lot going on. So to lose a lot in a short space of time is very difficult. And I can really empathize with that because I'm living that every single day now. Um, and it doesn't mean that we're not tough because we don't cry. It doesn't mean that we're not e understanding of how this works. It means that we're also human, that we're also residing in the, in the suit and that we chose to be here at this time in this suit so that we could experience these emotions. I'm not a big crier, so I'm a huge fan of menopause. I have thoroughly enjoyed and be like, oh, you know, you can take something for that. You know, I'm, I'm a really sweet, bubbly, fun, nice person always my whole life. And I've been a royal bitch for like four years and I've loved it. 
<laughs> it's been so fun because it's counterintuitive and it's so not like me. And I'll hear something fly out of my mouth and I'm like, oh, did I just say that? And then I'm like, ooh, I just said that. And so remember, we're here to experience all things. And so yeah. that sadness and that understanding and part of it is all we, you and I are here to teach. We're here to share. We're also here to learn. And part of that is when a student becomes teacher. And so when these people who are close to us are dying, we become the students. We have to learn to accept with grace and understanding that which we say we understand. Exactly. So you're being given that opportunity right now. And that's really, really important because you have a platform that you're affecting the lives of many, many people. And to allow them to see you real and authentic is such a gift. Well, don't ever forget that. Yes. Well, I want to hear, and I know everybody else is excited to hear. I, I have my experiences, but I'd love to hear heaven for you. Okay. All Whatever right. heaven is. I see it as a dimensional thing more than a... Oh, yeah. A, it's so funny. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know how we are in the South. It was like heaven was here and hell was here. And I'm going, yeah, no. Let me just let me just dispel that myth right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a vibratory state. It's a feeling. Um, it's not a destination. So, you know, when we're always talking about it's, it's the journey, not the destination. Well, that's kind of how it works with this, too. You have so many realms of existence. I just had the most um, amazing experience in a place called Rudston in East Yorkshire in the UK. And my mother and I had this huge trip planned to France um, for her 94th. And we flew over here and she got sick. And then I got sick. And so we missed the first two weeks of the holiday and had to cancel France. So we started watching a lot of TV and there was this ancient aliens episode and it was talking about this monolith in Rudston. And I'm totally into all of this. And I'm going, how did I miss this one? I really had never heard of this one. And I'm like, I know so many of these places and I knew the people that were talking about it. And I'm going, how did I miss this? So I'm like, hmm, my little wheels are turning. We were able to salvage the last week of her time here. She was well. I was well. And I was like, let's go for a drive. So we got on the ferry and went from Ireland to England. And we drove the whole way across England. And we went to this Rudston monolith. And so this is 25 feet above ground and below ground. It sits on a convergence of three major ley lines, one of which goes straight through um, Stonehenge down to the Karnak Standing Stones. It's an incredible space, right? So my mom's like 94, y'all picture this. And she's leaning and she goes, I'm just charging my pacemaker. <laughs> it was amazing because she's like, I can't believe I just saw this on TV. And it was so fun to kind of like take it off the flat 2D screen and make it a reality for her. So again, that was just, we were just sick watching this last week. And now we're standing here touching this. And that helps her to understand time travel. And so we're in this space and... um you know, it's it, it's so amazing um, to see in the light. But I was like, I went back. It was like one in the morning, put my mom to bed in the hotel. And I'm like, I'm going back out there. I'm going out, guys. And so I get in the car and I drive back to the place and it is pitch black. And I mean pitch black. And so I start taking pictures, but no flash, obviously, because I want to see what's coming up. Because I want to see if the camera catches what I'm looking at. I'm looking into this pitch black graveyard where the monolith is and there's all of these beings walking around and i'm going please show up please show up and they did i'll send them to you um yes. so you know we forget that it's there are things superimposed there are realities taking place concurrently there's a word i want you guys to really add into the vocabulary concurrently means it's happening at the same time the big cosmic haha, -ha, the big way you've been fooled is believing that time marches on in chronological order. Yeah, on one plane of existence it does, but on multiple other planes of existence it doesn't. And so all of these things are happening simultaneously. So if we fast forward, go back to the car accident, boom, I'm dead. I'm in this space. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, what happens is I am met by these two beings who ended up being my guardians, my guides. Yeah, so all of you got them. So when you're feeling pitiful and you think you're all alone, never, it's just not happening. Talk to them. They're there. It will change you. So it took me a while to recognize them, but then I did. And they appeared in the, in the shape of these two very old men. I loved old people. So they took on a form that I loved. 
Um, for some, they for someone who might need to see someone in a childlike form or might need to see a parent in their prime. That's how beings appear. They appear based on what is happening in your own frequency. So it's like when I was talking about you and your ex, that individual is responding to the frequency that you're putting out. It happens in the other realms, even out of the body as well. So I'm putting out the frequency that this, the sage wisdom and that feeling of comfort is in these older gentlemen. Remember, my best friend is a dead grandfather. So um, this is how they came to me. Is that what they look like all the time? I highly doubt it. Um, but that was how they appeared in that moment. But this was when everything I knew was turned on its ear because I got to watch my life review. And so when we're talking about this concurrent times, things happening simultaneously, parallel timelines, we can have one person can be having one experience and another can be having another. And this is what concurrent time shows us. And it also shows that we come here to have different experiences because here I am surrounded by the love of these two guides and I'm watching my life unfold in like a 360 arena and like I am four years old having that kitchen table talk with my father. Hey, sugar, you know, alive and dead over here. I'm 17 getting raped over here. I'm 11 getting Otto von Bismarck, my first bulldog over here. I'm winning Living History Day at 14 dressed as P.T. Barnum over here. I'm getting my driver's license at 16. I am paying the toll for the guy behind me, not realizing he was on his way to commit suicide over here. Every single one of them is happening simultaneously. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, hold on here. Time isn't linear. Wow. And nor is time in a circle or a loop. Time is more like that infinity. And so, um, but picture the infinity in a five dimensional being. And so you're watching this and you're going, oh, okay, this is really cool. So concurrent time, if, if, to give you a good example about the experiences that we have. So like I sit in here, I see a lot of people a day. Um, they come in with all sorts of stuff. So, you know, you can imagine. Um, I would see, let's say I had a 98 year old woman in here who has smoked every day of her life since she was eight, mm -hmm. since she was eight. And I'm not talking about just one before bed. She's a heavy smoker since she was eight years old. She was 98. Okay. Then I have a 38 year old who's experiencing lung cancer and they were a smoker. Okay. If the cigarettes caused the cancer, then both of them should have cancer. If someone is having an experience that is going to include cancer, a cigarette might get them to the experience the same way eating a carcinogen carcinogenic hamburger that's full of plastic or drinking contaminated water, or it's just a vehicle. Right. So when you see two people having two different experiences, they're actually living on two different timelines here because this is where we get this absolute, oh, um, mm, this particular illness is a killer. Everyone's going to die. We all need to do this. this a, mm -mm, because we all had different experiences. I had the best pandemic ever. I had so much fun and my experience with that was completely different than the people who were in fear or the people who were trying to help the people who were in fear. We all had different experiences. For some, it was a very heady experience. It was a very much so I need to make some decisions and make some changes. Some people got out of the office for the first time in 30 years and went, hey, I kind of like this. <laughs> some people cleaned out their 10,000 emails. Um, <laughs> some people got really sick. Some people didn't. Some people watched people get sick. You know, so we all had these different experiences with the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So anytime you hear anyone, I don't care if it's a family member, a government body, whoever, making anything an absolute, there is no such thing because that's not how this realm works. Yeah. An absolute is when the game is over. When the plug has been pulled and the game is over, that's an absolute. And in the history of the experience of this dynamic that we live in that we call the earth plane, None of us can remember it ever having ended yet. There's no historical reference to that. There's historical reference to lots of different things happening here. But there's never been an absolute where it all went away. And I want you to bear that in mind the next time the fear grabs you. Mm -hmm. So um, that experience was such a game changer for me, being out of body, standing in this little arena, watching all aspects of me happening at the same time. And I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, I am all of them and I'm none of them. <gasps> 
this is so incredible. And so it makes it really different when you kind of zoom back into your broken body and everybody's like, oh my gosh, you know, how did you deal with that? Like I had a broken neck. I was never supposed to have children. I have two, you know, I'm like, don't tell me what I can and I can't do. I will work with and make choices based according to what I feel like needs to unfold for me. And so I worked and I worked hard and I changed tact and I just graduated with a degree in um, communications and graphic design. Next thing I'm sitting in organic chemistry and physics and I hate math and getting through it in order to go become a doctor because wow. that was the step that I needed to take because I needed to work. But wasn't just any old kind of doctor. Remember, my grandfather is going the whole time. Hey, you're going to go. We are going to send you to chiropractic school. And I'm like, who's we? Who are we talking about here? And we want you to learn a vitalistic philosophy. I'm like, OK. So I go in and I go to chiropractic school and I get there and I go, oh, I get it. Because in the allopathic model, we tend to look at the pieces and parts. And if that's broken, we either fix that or we take it out or we radiate it or we medicate it. And then in this realm over here, we go, gosh, the mind, body, and spirit are intrinsically entwined and cannot and are not separate. So I have people walk in the door and they go, oh, chiropractic's for back pain, right? And I'm like, no, <laughs> not in this office. It's not. And they're like, oh, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, let's chat. And so they begin to realize how the mind, body, and spirit affect this vessel because we've had it so wrong all along where we think that the vessel... Um, uh, that we're here um, in service to humanity, but really the vessel has been created to be in service to our spirit. And so it's set up in such a really neat way. And this is where people think I'm just an absolute nut job. What, you're so excited that I had cancer? Yeah, I loved it when I had it. I got rid of, rid of it in three weeks because I wasn't meant to die from that. I dropped the ball. I wasn't paying attention. You know, we all have our ex stories. And I had a situation where... My ex wanted to take my two young girls to Disney World. And I was working nonstop, raising them by myself. And I was like, Disney, I wanted to do that. I'm the one who's doing everything for them. I'm raising them. You're not sending any money. And I went, yeah, okay. And two weeks later, I had breast cancer. I'm like, please. Do you know, because I'm a healer. And it was, it was the right thing to do to allow those girls to bond. You know, it was a, maybe creating a healing experience for them. No, what I did was I overrode my own feelings. I wasn't healed enough to allow that to happen, but I pushed it because it looked good, made me look great. And so next thing I have cancer, not him, not them, me. And the body is designed to go, hey, sunshine, guess what? And I'm like, I get it. So then you go into an oncologist who wants you to go down this road. And I'm like, oh, no, no, sorry. That's not the world I play in. Mm -hmm. That's not a very good idea because we can, don't even say it. I know how I got here and I know how I'm going to get out of it. And sure enough, within a month it was gone. And I went back and I said, would you like for me to share what I did? The protocol? No. And so you can get mad and go, I can't believe they don't want to know. That's not the world they're in. Right. They're in to facilitate the people who are in that realm. Right. And so they're doing a really good job at that, but I'm not in that realm. So I can sit and criticize them or I can tend my own garden and create this beautiful realm that maybe might get someone's attention and they might go, let me move from over here and have a look at this. And so the last three years for us have been magnificent with that because natural healers, people who are taking a natural approach to healthcare, the people who fared really well over the last three years because they, came, they showed up to the game in good shape. They mm -hmm. did really well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the favorite thing to do during that time was go, oh, unfortunate Nurse Jones, you know, she was only 28 and in perfect health. Well, they didn't tell you Nurse Jones had a $150,000 student loan or that her boyfriend had just left her or that she got pregnant and couldn't afford to have the child. They didn't talk about that part. They said, oh, she didn't have any underlying conditions and still got sick. And that's the psychos we've become, do you know? We right. get this thing where we draw people in and it's so easy to go there because it sounds really good. And then you think about it for a second and you go, wow. So, you know, being a near death experiencer, witnesser and all, it has really created a, a magnificent life for me because I can't go back to the old way. I can't like, it's like, um, 
you know, it's like once you've grown up out of, I can't wear the shorts that I wore when I was 18 years old either, but you know, like I've grown out of those, my body, my experiences, my, everything has changed since then. And it's supposed to. And so I don't want to go back to that way because I, I had to find my way out of it. And it was a long trek y'all. And so it's, it, oh, well, you know, it's good. It's well for some that you're the, I'm joyful because I wake up every day and I make it true. And I ask myself every single morning, because I've got, I'm like, you heard, I mean, I have a long list of things. I'm deaf here. I lost my, you know, I, I detached a retina. I broke my neck. I've shattered my pelvis. Like, I have so many things. You, you can't shake a stick at it. And I wake up in the morning and I go, okay, Whew. all right, here I am. Is the pain I'm in right now, either physically or emotionally, bigger than what I'd like to do today? Hmm. And maybe the answer one day will be no. So far at 54, it hasn't been no. There's not been a day, unless I was like really sick with the flu or with whatever, whatever, and I just felt crap and I needed to stay in bed. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about in general. I run myself through that filter every day and go, hey, how's it going today? How do you want to show up today? And that's what near death did for me because I got the chance to go outside and look back in and go, oh my gosh, I chose to put myself there. You're going to die. Newsflash, spoiler alert for all of you. You're going to die. And you don't need to be afraid of it. It's amazing. It's a great experience. But it's one where you know it's coming. You know, I know what it looks like there. I know what it feels like. I know what the experience is. It was magnificent. But I'm not homesick right now. Mm -hmm. I want to spend my time here focusing on why I put myself here. And I didn't put myself here to be comfortable. I put myself here to learn, to grow, to assist, and to be uncomfortable. And that other force that is around us continues to try and lure us in with, here, take this drop. Take this. We don't want you to hurt. We don't want you to feel anything. It's like I said with the menopause thing, I have enjoyed crying for the last couple of years because I never cried before, ever. I'm not a crier. I'm like, oh, that's what this feels like. Oh, it's so refreshing afterwards. Do you know? <laughs> Why would you make that go away? Why would you make the ability to go, you know what? No, I don't feel like listening to that today. Stop. Why would I want that to go away? It's pretty awesome. And it doesn't last forever. Yeah. And so it's that kind of, we want these quick fixes and we want to instantly be in, well, you know what, guys, why don't you stop worrying about chasing that for a little while and sit, sit in the fields because that's what you want. That gorgeous body that you are so critical of all the time. You put yourself in that body for a reason. Ask huh. yourself why. So what would you tell people in this day and age of where, like, if what, what's your biggest takeaway that you could give to encourage people where they are now? And you already and are that which you seek. I have thought about this so many times. I always envisioned myself sitting on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday and she's like, what is God? She always asks them all, you know, what is your piece of advice? What is God? And all this. And I'm like, you already are that which you seek. These divine, omnipotent, eternal, powerful, amazing spiritual beings who stuffed yourself into a meat suit that you criticize 24 seven, by the way, it's five senses, five, that's it. And you are sitting here trying to navigate yourself through this weird 3D world that's gone through this amazing transition where people are starting to see things and feel things and understand things in a different way. Have fun with that because you already came from that perfection. You came here not to be perfect. Let yourself off the hook and stop all this judgment crap. And the second you find yourself not chatting about Sue down the road, you're going to stop judging yourself. So just remember that. Remember what I said about Tesla. If you're judging, it's just a confession. So mm -hmm. that's really the, you know, the big takeaway for me. And so one of the biggest things that happened for me as a healer, I already had this unique gift when I came back from the experience where I could touch somebody and I can download their hard drive and I can hear and see and feel these things. I understood how frequency works in our lives and everything is frequency and light, everything. Yes. So I had the great fortune to meet a guy um, years ago um, called Greg Papania, and he is a frequency guru. He is just one of the most special human beings I've ever met in my life. And so 
we've been working together and we've been dearest of friends for a very, very long time. And he is so creative and such a genius at harnessing these frequencies. And that's what I use in my work with people when I'm doing healing, because I wanted to grow from, hey, I can put my hands on you and help you achieve X, Y, or Z. I wanted to grow into a space where they had something that they could take and they could become their own healer. They could discover that inner guru, or that inner healer. I even named one of the chapters in my book, one of my books, Jerusalem. Do you know? Because I'm like, we're always looking for that next guru. I'm like, it's, a, it's you. It's you. So we needed to create something to help people access that understanding. And so Greg came up with um, something that is super exciting because I am now, we're literally putting all the goods out there. So when people come to me and they're going through a frequency healing and they're sitting in this immersive space where they're going through music that has a ton of different frequencies that's doing anything from an organ clearing to clearing their emotional state. I mean, it's powerful stuff. And Greg has created an app and it's called signs, S I N E S like a sine wave signs dot app. And for the price I pay for a freaking oat milk latte a day, you can get per month access to all of this. And we've got the most incredible authors and teachers, meditations, mood states, you name it, it is there. It's a one-stop shop, finally, where people can go in and they can access this. So my kids, for instance, they didn't grow up taking medications. They know that if something's going on, like if there's an anxiety, my daughter will hit 396 hertz because mm -hmm. fear, grief, anxiousness, anxiety, um, self-loathing, they all reside in the realm of 396. And what's so interesting about that, and I'm like, how do they all live in the same space? Well, the way I describe it to people is it's like you could have two people who are from New York City who couldn't be more different. They both still live in New York City. So grief lives in the city of 396 and anxiety lives in the city of 396. Self-loathing lives in the city of 396. And what happens with frequency now is we are finding that so many people are so full they're so super saturated mm -hmm. that the signals are starting to get crossed. Yeah. So they might go outside, get in the car, jump on, jump into the road and get to a traffic light and someone runs the light and nearly hits them and they go. <gasps> and the next thing they're on the side of the road in tears because they're grieving their dead mother. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I'm seeing people now. This is what's fascinating to me is these signals are now crossing due to super saturation. We are so overstimulated. And with stuff that's just, it's like rubbish, you know? So you've got a glass full of water and somebody's just standing there with a pitcher, just pouring more water and it's just spilling all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so what frequency can do with us is it helps us to align, but it puts us back into control. So I can hand my earphones on an airplane over to the person next to me who's in a full on sweat as the plane is sitting on the runway. And I always get the ones who are terrified of flying and I'll stick my earbuds in and pop on 852 and they're like, mm -hmm. And we're up and we're out and we're gone. And they're like, what just happened? I'm like, meet 852. That's you putting yourself back to, back into control because you, your higher self, knows that you're not going to die on this plane. And so that's other anxieties that have just crept in. And they're like, oh, my gosh. Oh, and so then it always opens up a fascinating conversation. You know, I love to teach. And that person wants, wants to hear what's going on. It's amazing. So the Signs app is unreal. It's constantly being like my books, my audio books are there. Other people's stuff is there and it's constantly being uploaded and upgraded. And so like a video facility is coming soon and I'm a, a dream of mine is my little show called the Mary Hellion. So yeah. I've got this 30 minute funny episode of like, it's, it's done in kind of Instagram, TikTok style where it's um, super fast and really funny, but it gets these really good points across to a different generation. You know, if you find yourself wanting to be critical all the time of the people who, who are coming up behind us, then you ain't being no giant that, that, that they can stand on your shoulders. You know, you're being the critic that's sitting there trying to chop them down. We want everyone to win, yes. you know, but not at a stage. It's not, not like, hey, everybody gets a ribbon. I'm not talking about that kind of winning. I'm talking about you can provide people with the choices and the tools so that they can make those choices for themselves based on where they are in this experience. Because I'm a firm believer in faith. Faith without works is dead. You know, I, I like the elbow grease. 
And so this app is bringing this, you know, to fruition. So that's something I'd love to leave with you. Signs.app. It is Greg's life work. Um, my own life work has contributed along with a bunch of other people's where you have a go-to where you can actually access all the tools to help yourself heal. And you're stopping chasing every, everything around. So my kids will grab that. If they have a headache, they know that they're going to go in and they sit with the frequency of 285 or 174 if it's sudden and go, hmm, I just got a really bad headache. And my daughter will put on 174, which is about acute pain. And then she'll go, oh, mom said something that really pissed me off earlier. <laughs> and then she'll understand that's where that headache came from. Or someone could be just minding their own biz in the kitchen, chopping cucumbers, and something's on the news in the background that upsets them that they don't even realize they heard, but it got in there subconscious, subconsciously. And next thing, they cut their finger. And wow. so there is a rhyme and a reason for everything. And frequency can help us access that without having to go. You know, it's like living in a whole different world. You know, I find out I have cancer. I'm like, okay, I'll be back in three weeks. And if my way hasn't worked, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll contemplate your way, but I, I know what happened and I know how to get rid of it. And so there, you know, there are some people who will find out that they, they have something and they're going to live the remainder of their days with that. Now they can peacefully coexist or they can extract the lessons that it has to teach. They can get rid of it. There are multiple options based on what their soul had planned. And so, you know, those are the kind of things that having a near-death experience brought into my life. It was that understanding of, you have a lot more control in a situation you've been taught that you have no control over. And so this is why I love frequency work so much because it gives you the access to that. Oh gosh, I didn't realize that 528 Hertz resonated at human DNA. 528 Hertz resonates at human DNA, by the way, guys. So if you've got something going on where you are out of alignment or out of kilter and a disease process is taking place in the body, what frequency would you immerse yourself in? Right. Because when you are going in and you are asking the important questions and you were reeling back and going, oh, that's where I gave my path. God, I knew it. That's where I did it. And you take ownership and you take responsibility and you stop pointing the finger outside of you and blaming everybody else for how shitty you feel emotionally or physically. Then your whole world changes. Everything changes. Yeah, I, I'm a big frequency person. We haven't talked about that, but like I am all about frequency. I love sound healing. I love all the gadgets. I have Rife and yeah. things I can't even say online. Well, we wanted to make something that was easy and affordable for the general population to be I able to it. have that kind of power at their fingertips. I love it. So that's what we're doing. And so it doesn't put, we don't, we're, we're not trying to, we're trying to put ourselves out of jobs as healers because we want everybody to remember that they already are. But yeah. Our job then changes because we teach them then how to use the tools. Yes. Our, our job just evolves. We want to take people out of the mindset that their healing and their wholeness is an outside end job. Yes. It, everything's an inside. My whole book talks about the inside job. I love, I Brilliant. love that. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, that's why Greg created this app and all these different things are on there because it means, look, we live in a technological age and people can bash it all they want to, you know, look, I can barely open my own email. Um, but I'm trying, I'm doing yeah. the best that I can and I'm, I'm growing with it because there are so many really wonderful things that technology can do. There's yes. some very, very harmful things that it can do, but I also used my car to drive to England and that was a wonderful thing. I was, I was also killed stone dead in a car. So, it's how the tool is there to serve you and how you are utilizing the tool. So don't demonize everything that, you know, it's again, it's that whole point finger pointing. It was that, Oh yeah, it was this, you know, well, you know, if your child is misusing technology, then maybe you want to run through your own filter. How's that happening? Yeah. Where well, are you? I mean, did you, did you raise the child by putting a screen in front of them to, so you could go get a minute's peace? Right. That's okay. And it's not a judgment, but right. own it and right. go, Hey, I might've not handled that the way that I, that I should have, do you know, or maybe I'd like to talk to my child about changing that or yeah. maybe it's, it, it, but we're so fast. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. Technology is bad. Right. 
technology is now there to serve us in a way like we have never been served before. It is connecting us in realms and ways. Do you know? And then there's the whole argument about artificial intelligence and all that coming in. You know, you can remember one thing. You chose to be here at this time for a reason. Yep. So what are you going to do? Are you going to sit and bitch and moan about it? Or are you going to light this place up with your positivity, with your positive contributions and input? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, I've studied like judgment. You keep talking about that. It's interesting. Um, the limbic system, and you know all this, but for those watching, the limbic system cannot tell the difference between you or me, um, time, anything. So every time we give, we actually have chemicals that, that go throughout the body that, that it, it seems like we're receiving instead of giving. And so giving actually is because there is no them, there's no you, it's all, we're all one. Right. And so the same thing with judgment, if you judge someone else, you also have the negative chemicals that you're judging yourself, even though you think you're judging someone else, you are actually getting the chemical response of judging yourself because there is no them either. So um, it's just really, a confession. Yep. You just said, I didn't know that Tesla said that. And I'm a big Tesla guy. I'm Isn't girl. that fun? Yeah. So I'm going to have to look look that up, but uh, I'm going to put all the links um, in, in there so everyone can find you very easily. But just for the audible, I know you gave the app. Where can we find you for your website or Amazon? Everything's on Amazon and, and then MaryHelenHensley.com. Okay. All right. Easy. Well, we make it easy peasy. Do you know? Yes, yeah. oh, yes, ma'am. And, well, um, yeah, so it's just like when you talk about that limbic system, I am, I'm, I've got so many books on the runway in this very full brain of mine, and but one of them I'm dying to do is called um, Viva Lost, Viva Lost Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the vagus nerve and and because it's technology has made it so easy to explain things to people. It's like you know when you've got multiple apps open and then your teenager came along and said, hey. You're killing your battery here because you've got like 45 apps open right now. That's here, me. watch this. Swipe, yeah. swipe. And I was like, oh. and all of a sudden my battery lasted all day long, right? And my world changed. Yeah. And so it's really, really funny because people can understand that, you know, when you put anything in the terms of a phone, yeah, your batteries are running low because you've got a million different apps open. Yeah, that's what my life is like. Yeah. And so the vagus nerve is like throwing on a FaceTime live. And here I am transmitting in real time and you're watching me where I am. And this is what the Vegas does. And this is why we get that, that head and gut reaction and that whole gut feeling thing. And people don't realize about the brain and the gut. And it's because we've got this live feed going on. So your gut is reacting because it's actually the main brain and it's reacting to the stimulus that the eyes are taking in and seeing all around you. And so I want to really, um, I really, really want to talk about the importance of the vagus nerve and um, the way vagal stimulation is affecting us and how we can, how we can work with that using frequency. Would you ever want to come back and talk about that? Like maybe we yes. can have a whole session on that. that would yes, awesome. I would. Okay. Okay. And maybe even go into more of, um, the frequency thing. And I'd love app. for you to have Greg on Greg. Would, yeah. Greg would be oh my gosh. brilliant maybe to talk about that. Both I'll of hook you up. Yeah. I'll okay. hook you up because really it's just about getting people it's the day and the age that we live in. If you told me 10 years ago that I'd have anything to do with an app on a phone, but then you realize that there's not a person you can see walking around who doesn't have one to hand. And so yeah. the fastest way is you've got to speak their language. And if that's their language and you want to make the work that you're doing and the understanding of how to teach people that they are so in control of what's happening around them at a time when they feel so out of control, mm -hmm. it's pretty phenomenal. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And I know you're so busy and have all kinds of things going on. And I guess it's night there for you. So it is. This, but it'll be it'll be light till midnight. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, I am. Um, again, I, this was a lot for me, <laughs> apparently. Um, I, I don't ever think anything's a coincidence, but I appreciate your patience and your love oh, and your gosh, my, it's and such a pleasure. All of that. Um, and I can't wait to have you back. So I will look at some dates and get you back and maybe have Greg on with you or do something different with that. That would be you. fun. Yeah. That awesome. would be really fun. Well, tell your mom, hey, and I will. 
you guys have a great night or she's left though so yes I he left yesterday know. morning but she's yesterday. nine to four y'all traveling amazing. the world i'm so Guess glad why? she uses chiropractors and frequency <laughs> well my <laughs> mom has an her. amazing attitude yeah she she's so fun i watch you guys and um my mom and i are best friends to you and so it's so cool to see like relationships when they're that good still and everything's going good but, but we're still you. learning you know yeah. we just put in a tough month and we're we're both super you know buzzy positive people and we put in a tough month together yeah. and it was it we had stuff that we needed to work through together as as mother daughter as a family unit as you know and it was really i was like oh this is really uncomfortable and she was like oh this is really uncomfortable but we needed to do that and you know how fortunate that she's still here for me to be able to do that because a lot of the work I'm doing with people, they're having to do this once the person is, is has already gone. Um, right. You know, but it's the same. You can still have those same less lessons and make those same connections and understandings and ahas, whether somebody's in a body or not. Yes. What a gift for sure. Well, I appreciate you as a gift. And thank you. I appreciate you and thank you for the platform. Wow. Yes, ma'am. And um, for those of you guys watching, I hope you guys do check out the app and her books and all of the things. And um, we will be having her back. So I look forward to that. And you guys have a great day. Um, make the best of it. Everything that you're doing today matters. Everything you say, everything you think, everything you feel, be aware, love and be kind everywhere you go. Do your best. <laughs> And you never know what people are going through. I really do encourage you when you're at the grocery store, when you're talking to customer service, you just don't know what's going on with these people. So love and sprinkle that blazing, blasting love everywhere you can today and make a difference in people's lives. And um, I just love all of you so much. Thank you for being with us here today. And um, we Thank will you. see you next time. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you.